Uh, here to talk more about Al Davis is someone who knew him very well, Bill Romanowski. Uh, thanks for taking the time to join us, Bill. And uh, I you. asked you as you came out on set, the circumstances under which you came to the Oakland Raiders. You want to share that with the people at home? Yeah, it was, uh, I had just left Mike Shanahan's office and uh, he had told me that he wanted me to be a happy backup. And I knew I wasn't going to be a happy backup. So I walked out of his office. I made a call to my agent. I said, Tom, you tell the Denver Broncos to cut me right now. And hung up and then made another call to Al Davis. And I got Fudgy, his secretary. And I said, Fudgy, Bill Romanowski here. Uh, tell Mr. Davis I want to help him win another Super Bowl. And she said, well, he's in a meeting right now. Um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I get a call five minutes later, and he said, uh, she said, Mr. Davis thinks you'd look good in silver and black. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest pretty much was history after that. It didn't take very long. Obviously, you had a prior relationship with him. Uh, what was the circumstances under which you came to know Al, and, and can you tell people at home how, how that res relationship was fostered? Well, I, I can't say it was one I loved. <laughs> it's one that drove me crazy. And I used to want to tackle him on the sidelines. <laughs> and here's what it, would, what it would be. Whenever we'd play the Raiders, he'd always stand over by the linebackers, and he'd be doing this and give you this, these, this look with his glasses on. And he'd just be taking notes, and he'd just look at you. And I'd be like, what the heck is he writing down? And I think I ought to just you know, mess up in this drill a little bit and go over and give him a little forearm shiver. But uh, that was just how he was. His personality was, uh, it was intense when you were around him on the sideline. And then to be able to play for him, you know, I eventually, I think the next day or two, had a long talk with him. And it was literally an hour-long talk about football. Not about he and I and me being a Raider. It was just football. And it was one of the most fascinating talks I've ever had in my life with somebody. And I was like, this, is, th this guy is unbelievable. I've never, I mean, I'm talking from all the different coaches that I've ever been around. The things that he would bring up in this conversation were in the plays he would bring up. You could only know if you were watching film. And, and there were so many different games and plays he brought up that were just astounding to me. We've heard people from people, Sean Jones has talked about it, and uh, a couple of people since we've been on the air, just about how precise he was, even in practice. You got your footing wrong on that play. I mean, it, it was almost it seemed like it was uncanny. No, that's the way he was. What about when you retired? Did he have anything to say to you then? Yeah, he called. He was the only one to call me. And he called me and thanked me for my time as a Raider. And he thanked me for my time in the NFL. He said the NFL was better because of guys like you. You know, another story I have is every time you talked with him, was a test of some sort. He was testing you in some way, you know? And I remember one of the conversations, it, you know, uh, Howie Long came up and he would say something like, and I knew he was dead on, knew what he was saying. Yeah, when Howie retired in 1998, I remember we went through a little bit of a struggle. I said, Mr. Davis, it wasn't 1998. I, I think I said, I think it was 1993 or 92, whatever it was. And he said, oh, yeah. And then he would keep talking to you. <laughs> but if, if I would have not caught him on that, you know what he would have done? Ended conversation. He would have ended the conversation <laughs> and he would say, Bill, uh, I have another meeting now and I need to, uh, to, I need you to get going. Raymond Chester, 12 years in the National Football League, a tight end, two stints with the Raiders, including the Super Bowl champion in Super Bowl 15. He joins us here on the set. And, well, Raymond, let's start with the first time you met Al Davis, 1970. You come in as a first round pick. What was he like? 
Well, he was he was uh, he was a leader. He was a leader then. He was excited. He seemed to be as excited about meeting me as I was about being in Oakland and being a number one draft choice. And uh, boy, I, he just set the set the table for a wonderful relationship that lasted, you know, over 30 years. How much did Al Davis want that us against the world mentality? You know, that's a good question. I, you know, we never thought about it like that. Uh, but all the time that he was uh, leading our, lead, or the organization, it, that was forming. I mean, his attitude toward uh, the games, his attitude toward the rest of the teams in the league, um, uh, he, he developed that camaraderie. And I, I think it was uh, largely due to his, uh, his background. His, his growing up in the East Coast and, uh, you know, things are pretty clandestine and whatever. And we, we just became a... Uh, a clan of our own and, and, a, and a team of our own, a gang. I mean, I can remember being in Denver uh, one time and hearing uh, one of the Denver coaches uh, just really going off on his team. You know, we were, we were beating him pretty soundly. And we heard him say, uh, hey, you're going to let those gang fighters, those hoodlums from Oakland come in here and beat us? And we kind of liked that. We liked the fact that we were being referred to as, uh, you know, as a gang, as a band, as a, as a tough tough group of guys. And you were tough. Everyone knew you were coming to town. They circled that date on the calendar. When we, when we think about Al Davis, he was a forward thinker, maybe ahead of his time. He scouted the old Southern Conference. He was the first guy to draft a black quarterback in Eldridge Dickey. Did he mean more to African-American athletes? Well, absolutely. I mean, in the sense that the AF, AFC, the old AFC, was a, uh, you know, an opportunity for players from smaller schools, predominantly, uh, you know, traditionally uh, black colleges and that kind of thing, to have some inroads into the NFL. Uh, and Al Davis's connection with that, and and what that league developed to in a very short time. I mean, just you look at the time it took for the AFC from the development of it to where it became it, it matched parity. You know what the NFL and even causing the merger and certainly it was awesome when I first got to the Raiders uh, franchise um, I think there were uh, there were about 23 24 minority players on on the roster and that was only surpassed by Kansas City Chiefs who had just won the Super Bowl and Kansas City had 27 28 minority players on the team now you know it doesn't matter how many guys you have in one color or another on the team but that was significant in 1969 1970 that was unheard of he wanted good football players in the end that's what he wanted good football players now, you were a Raider than a Colt but a Raider again in fact Al Davis he admitted the one mistake he made was trading Raymond Chester what was it like to come back to the silver and black well, I'll tell you, that, that, that uh, makes me laugh a little bit. But, uh, it was actually wonderful coming back to the Silver and Black. But I, I can tell you a little story about that trade. And, and after the trade, when I came back to the Raiders, and, and I don't know whether Al admitted it was a mistake or not, but here's how it goes. I think the mistake, it was a mistake made, but I think the mistake was this. There was an opportunity for the Raiders to trade me the year prior to me being traded to the Colts for Bubba Smith, there was an opportunity for the Raiders to trade me to the Steelers for Joe Green. And they didn't do it. And the next year, you know, when Bubba Smith became available, they traded me for Bubba Smith. So if there was a mistake made by Al, it was not, not trading me for the great Joe Green as opposed to Bubba Smith, who was a great player in his own right. Uh, but you came back to the silver and black all pro, and he won a Super Bowl. Finally, there's an outside image in sport that once an athlete plays a game and he's gone from an organization, he's gone. How did Al Davis treat former Raiders once they were done playing the game? Oh, I think that is doc well documented. I mean, I think when, when, when a uh, player truly committed and, and understood that he was a Raider, he was involved in an organization, uh, he contributed to that organization, you were in the family, and I think in, unless you opted out or, you know, just, just did something totally contrary to what, you know, what's important to us, uh, you're in the family. And so that... It was extended to coaches, players, uh, fans, and whatever. Once you're in there, it was two kind of politics with Al Davis, I believe, and they were simply the politics of uh, inclusion or the politics of exclusion. And so once you were in, and you're, you're, in, you're in for life. Raymond Chester, it's a pleasure hearing your insights into Al Davis. Thanks so much. Thank you very much.